<laughs> guys, people were afraid of me in Sweden. Okay, so let's just let's just clear that up before we go. We need to get on to some yeah, basketball just, talk because this is just getting uh, uncomfortable we, here. Should we probably start? Yeah. Yeah. yeah we'll right. just. I think we just go from now. Oh, okay. a, a be different podcast. Instead of shooting in downtown Cincinnati, we we are at Dana Gardens. Uh, we had the Barstool guys from UC, CJ Anderson, in here earlier. We now have. The voice of college basketball. Can I call you the voice of college basketball? Can I do that? Soon to be commissioner of college basketball once I overthrow <laughs> Mark Emmer. I would love you to be the commissioner. Would uh, I not be the be best? You do a great job. I'd be better than Goodell. You would get the right people in places, and you'd move yeah. us forward. That's what you would do. Be, Bobby I, Regan at Barstool Regs would move us forward. I'm, I'm, I know what you're doing. You're trying to get a spot on my staff, and I don't know if it's going to work. <laughs> I just don't understand why I can't be involved. I just, I feel like I should be involved. I, like, I want cabinet members. I'm, I'm all in on a full like commissioner with everything else going yes. on. Can I be head of drink pouring on your plane? <laughs> Very much so. Thank you so Greg, much. what are you going to do? I, I'll fly the plane. We'll yeah. figure it out. <laughs> we'll figure it out. Don't we'll worry, we're good. Know. We could solve all of the NCAA's problems, and I think, I think two to three yeah. hours – of legitimate talk and conversation, and then we let the commissioner go for about a week. Yeah. Yeah. We'd, we'd have a new, a whole new deal here by next Monday. Give me 15 minutes, we have a whole new deal. Like, I think, like, <laughs> this is what I think about during the day. Like People like, daydream. I'm like, all right, here's how I'd fix this. What do you think needs to be done? What needs to be done? Oh, God. I, well, first, you got to start with everything going on, right? With the investigations, everything like that. You need to let college football, and we'll stick to college basketball, college basketball guys, have representation in college. Absolutely. It's got to start with that. Then let them profit on their likeness. Like People keep talking about, oh, it's going to ruin mid-majors. What mid-majors competing on a national level year in and year out? Like it's, it's still Kentucky. It's still Kansas. It's still Duke. It's still North Carolina. It's still UCLA. It's still Arizona. Guess It doesn't matter how much money they give someone, which let's preface this. That's not cheating. Like Cheating to me is what happens on the court. You can say, like, yeah, they, they brought in better players. You still got to win. Like, how many times has the best team actually won the NCAA tournament? Ten in the last 20 maybe, years? Maybe. Right. So Probably not even that high. Right, right. So that's my, kind of my premise is people keep yelling, like, oh, they're cheating. And it's like, not really. They're just profiting, which who who is outraged by that? It's America. We who, live like, here. It's the whole point. I, I really want someone not associated with college basketball who's just a fan, to look me in the eye and say, you know what, I'm outraged that Miles Bridges took $400. <laughs> yeah, that's it's unbelievable. Allegedly. I, there was, the numbers in those reports are there, there was laughable. Like $70. Laughable. We can write up a $70 bill right here. I swear to God they left off a zero at the end of every one of those numbers. <laughs> right. Then it'd make more sense. It just doesn't make any sense. It's like there, there's a problem, so when you have a problem, you fix it. You just, you just fix the problem. But with all the people making money at the top that don't want to fix the problem is where you have the issue. But everybody knows there's too many holes right now. There's too many stories coming out. Yep. Regardless of whether the Sean Miller story is true or not, honestly, doesn't really matter to college basketball. It, it needs to be changed regardless. Yeah, and then there's a lot of stuff that has to be changed on the court, right? Like, And not even on the court, but like, for instance, right now, the Big Ten playing in Madison Square Garden a year after D.C., that can't happen. Like, you're from Michigan. That's Big Ten country. Play in Indianapolis, play in Chicago. Once every five years, play in MSG or, or D.C. Like Make that the way for every conference. Rotate between two cities except for the Big East. Big East gets Madison Square Garden every year. I don't care who's in the Big East. Like It could be Grand Rapids, uh, Grand Canyon, Utah Valley, and Texas Rio Grande Valley. <laughs> they're playing in Madison Square Garden. That is if a they're sick in the Big lineup. East. I love that lineup. It would sell out. <laughs> if you slap the Big East and an Aeropostale or American Eagle logo on it, it's going to fill out. I guarantee it. But like things like that, and then obviously like what's going on with the flow. Like I love that the NIT is doing um, experimental rules, going to quarters, yeah. resetting fouls. Like that needs to happen. I was in the bonus before the under sixteen TV timeout last year, last night. I, well, it was a, it's five fouls, right? Isn't it five, five fouls, fouls to get into the fouls. bonus now? And it's ten minutes. So if there's five fouls early, guess what? It resets after ten minutes. Yeah. You don't have to deal with 16 minutes of free throws. You're dealing with six. Yeah. Like, how the, the national championship game was ruined last year by officiating. It should have been an awesome game, but it was 48 free throws. That can't happen. I don't know. I think... I think they're exhilarating to watch free throws. Do you love free throws? Yeah, I do. You like guys just sitting at the free throw line and hitting shots from 10 yeah. feet away all day? No, it's boring. They should have to shoot threes. Well, I mean, it depends if you're a UC or Xavier fan. 
You see, they're not so great from the strike. There you are. There's the Xavier That's Van Eyck. That's there you are. are. There you are. You just, just had to go. You they're had to go in and dig. They're big. standing right there. Yeah, I mean, they're, I know. they're still, I they're to still standing here. standing right there. <laughs> they're still here. I had, I had to get one dig in. You know? And he's as far one. away as them as possible. That's what you said. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He always does this. He does it. It's pretty funny, though. That's he does it every time. It's like a very slight dig, and then you wait to see if I'm going to call you out on it. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I, I've never started a controversy or an argument on my <laughs> You don't look like that kind of guy. Not, you, don't not look, one you, bit. you don't look like that guy at all. Not one bit. You don't sound like it either. <laughs> so, Brett, I've been trying to... I, Go I, ahead, maybe Nick. I have to do it on air. I don't know. I've been uh, through text and through phone conversations. I've been trying to get it out. How much money did Brad Redford get from Sean Miller? And he just won't give me a, a clear answer. Maybe with that fancy hat of Barstool that you have on, you can get him to... To be truthful. Okay, Brad, how much did you pay Sean Miller to take you? <laughs> <laughs> That's very fair. Uh, Sean tried to slip me uh, some money, actually, back in the day. He did. He, he, tried, he tried to slip me some cash. I wouldn't take it. He, I wouldn't take it... Um, you know, because I said I want education. You know, I, I don't. I don't want money. <laughs> I don't. I don't want real value. I don't want to afford things. I just. I just want to go to school. I'm here to play defense, and, and I want to put and, and I want to put my life into practice and, and shooting three point shots. I was like, don't give me cash. Fifty grand. What is fifty grand in the long scheme of yeah. life? I'm 18 years old. What was Sean, I'll figure this out. What was the greater value? Number of dribbles you took inside the three point line, or cash, <laughs> or cash you received from Sean Miller? <laughs> I, I, I don't know if I can disclose that that information uh, with everything that's going on right now. Right, I, right. I can't I can't get into specifics because then at that point I, I could be liable. And, and the last thing that I want to do is put anybody, including myself, in, in a really just bad situation. I get the question. I, Bobby, I wish I could answer it. But I, would, I hate to tell you, I, I can't. I would, well, I would pay to see you in an NCAA testimony or like the FBI testimony. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Listen, well, I, I did not action. accept anything. I, I'll go up there, guys, guys, guys. <laughs> come on, <laughs> right. people are getting paid here. Did I get paid? I got no, a, I didn't get paid. I but a, <laughs> I got a thirty-dollar Greyhound ticket from Detroit, Michigan. I used to get like two hundred fifty dollars of subway money, and I, I had more twelve-inch chicken sandwiches than anybody else that's a, we'll cut it right before this yeah we'll cut it right before this yeah. so it doesn't put me in a bad spot i have more 12 inch than anyone here <laughs> is what it's gonna yeah. say on the clip yeah I, like it. I know i always throw it out there just to keep the so xavier alive. basketball hazes i understand that now okay <laughs> could get uncomfortable uh speaking of xavier basketball bobby your thoughts on xavier musketeers possibly winning the the big east title outright they have a chance Saturday against DePaul uh, to get that done. How impressed have you been with, with Xavier being able to uh, to win the Big East, possibly outright? Right, right. I think it's wildly impressive, right? Like, they haven't taken the bad loss. You look at the non-conference, they took care of business. Weird games, like, at Northern Iowa right before Christmas. Like, that's a loss that Xavier probably takes seven, eight out of ten years. Not this year. You, you look, look at the Arizona State game. That was when Arizona State was rolling. They were on fire the second half. I don't know... How many teams in the country would have beat Arizona State that second half? Well, especially not Trey Holder the way that he played. Yeah. Right, I mean, right. Guy was unbelievable. And for them to be down four, or I mean, Arizona State was down fourteen yeah. in that game, right. and to Xavier, win and by and not to and yeah. not to downplay Arizona State, but at that time, I mean, Xavier was known as a really good team. Nobody really knew how good yeah, Arizona that, State was. No. So I don't think like Xavier was Arizona State completely prepared. Mm. Right. That that and then the Kansas game was like, oh, okay, yeah, they had a really good there. like three weeks. Yeah. That was just unbelievable. Are they in the top twenty-five anymore? No, no, no. they're out. They're, they're, they're on the did bubble. Did they die? No, they're like an eight seed. What happened? Oh, they're really? Dead. They're dead. Yeah, they're like an eight seed. They're, they're dead. dead. They, they, they died last week. Skiing That's accident. So sad. Mount, <laughs> mountain <laughs> tripping. Mount <laughs> Snow mass in the deeps of Arizona. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, even the loss of Providence, like that was a game that you can understand why they lost that, right? Like it's at Providence. It's a tough place to play. Providence desperately needed that win. Xavier was on, what, a 10-game winning streak. You're kind of due for one. Like Xavier's a, a, a great team, but they're not they're not dominant where they're going to go in and, and, and sweep Providence or the Big East. But what I think has been impressive is the fact that they've, they've swept everyone else except Villanova, which is still the one kind of red flag is – can you be the team like Villanova? I think me, me and you talked about it after the game. It's just mental at this point. <laughs> it's got to be. Because we so. did the post game show after the game. So. We're like, we just, right. Xavier just can't figure it yeah. out against yeah. Villanova. But there's only one team in college basketball that's Villanova, and it's Villanova. And as long as you get into the big ass tournament and you don't have to play them, you're good. But at the same time, what, what, I agree with that. 
There's only one Villanova. There is, but there's only one Highlander. It's the same shit. But it's there the is thing. there is teams that mimic what Villanova can do with the shifty guards. Now you don't have a lot of Jalen Brunsons, but you uh, have you have guys like Trey Holder out in the world who those third team All Americans, honorable mention All Americans. You catch them getting hot one game. I mean, we see we saw we saw with Villanova. They lost to Kimball or Shabazz. They lost yeah. to NC State when they shouldn't have. Like you just you just get that one guard that goes nuts for. 35 of the 40 minutes. Not even that. 28 of the 40 minutes. That's where they get a little well, That's where Nigel Marshall is going to be important. And I think that's what's been the biggest storyline throughout the Big East is the fact that Gooden and Marshall have gotten better game after game after game. And now you have guys that you can, they can put out there. I think that was was most disappointing about that game. And we, we touched on it at the time. But it looked like Xavier was trending up. Villanova was trending yeah. down. And they still... Beat Xavier up at the Villanova, Center. Villanova was trending down because Phil Booth and Eric Pascal was right. hurt. Now, now they're back. Like that, that, well, they, they run the death lineup when you can yeah. run Spellman at the five I'm, or, or Pascal at the five and you switch one through five. I'm pretty sure Villanova has six guys shooting over 40% from the three-point line right now. I mean, that's just – I mean, that's death to Xavier. I mean, they're, they're one three one. Well, they it's, it's, it's death to the pack line, and well, it's death to the one three one. Yeah, well, the one three one that they love to run against teams to surprise them, like they don't surprise Villanova with that because I mean they're just going to find that open guy on the perimeter. And against Xavier, they make uh, they make almost fifty percent from the three point. Well, line. the scary thing about that is Jalen Brunson is shooting fourteen percent from three over his last seven games. Yeah. He's, the, he's the best player in America. Yeah. <laughs> like he's national player. That he, if I'm voting right now, I'm voting Jalen Brunson national player. Hundred percent. He's shooting fourteen percent. Do you think they cut the trophy in half and give half to his dad? <laughs> yeah, uh, maybe send it Rick to Rick Brunson. <laughs> 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 but I, you know, I, 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 what's been impressive is the fact that you you took care of business. Xavier took care of business against teams they should have. They didn't slip up against Marquette. Didn't slip up against Seton Hall. That like, you should have lost at Seton Hall. The fact that they come back and win that that says a lot. You know, you, you know, you get Providence at home to make up for the, the uh, road loss. You don't slip up against Georgetown, St. John's. Like, we've seen we've seen those teams catch people. Now you just have to do one more time against a team that can catch somebody. But it's at DePaul, so. I don't think they're overlooking this game at all, though. I don't no, think they are no. either. I mean, it, it, you want to win that right title. Because if game, you yeah. have to share it with Villanova, it feels seed. like Villanova wins the Big East. 100%. They, you go to New York, you get the do. two seed. And they have the tiebreaker on the number one, on the top, top one seed line. You want the outright Big East title. That's the one shot that you have, well, one of the two shots you have of being a number one seed in the NCAA tournament. Yeah, I mean, I think if you're the number, I mean, if they win this game, they're number one seed. They pretty much lock it in. Let's this see. and just get to the finals. Correct. Yeah. Because I right mean, now, the, you can't yeah. lose first round and you're right. there for the game. Xavier can't get the West. I mean, they just. So uh, there are eight uh, teams right now that I think are in play for a one seed. They want the West. Eight. Oh. There are eight teams right now in play. It's Virginia, Kansas. Xavier, Villanova, Michigan State, Duke, Purdue. Seven. I'm sorry, seven. I thought you were going to say Kentucky. I mean, I'm, <laughs> yeah, right. sorry, okay, I want to put them there. Okay. I, okay, you're a Kentucky fan? I graduated from there. God, I like you so much, more. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Brad, thanks for the fucking bio. I appreciate it. <laughs> Do your research, I guess. <laughs> yeah, sorry. So those seven, but Purdue or Michigan State are going to lose. Mm -hmm. So, okay, that should eliminate one. Duke, Virginia, you just hope Duke loses at some point. Carolina losing Miami, Duke losing Virginia Tech help, but again, if Duke wins the ACC tournament, Michigan State wins the Big Ten tournament, and now you're in a little bit of like that four spots going to be up for grabs. Is there a way that the Big East can get two teams? Do you very, think Villanova so. Xavier can get to once? Villanova wins on Saturday. Xavier wins on Saturday. They meet in the finals. Villanova beats Xavier, or if Xavier beats Villanova, Michigan State and loses to. Um, like Ohio State in the yeah Big Ten finals. Like you, you really just you're cheering against uh, Duke, Purdue, and Michigan State. All right, let's switch gears to Cincinnati. Okay, we we had the Barstool guys over from Cincinnati earlier. They gave their thoughts on Coach Cronin. and you see where they're at right now. They had a 74, I'm sorry, 78-49 win last night at Tulane. Doesn't say a whole lot about them, but they have the big game on Sunday against Wichita State. Where, where are the Bearcats at right now, and where do you think uh, what do you think happens in that game on Sunday? I mean, me and you were both in attendance for that game against Wichita here in Cincinnati. I don't know if I've ever been more impressed with a team in person 
than I was with Wichita. Just like watching like Landry Shamit's bigger than I thought he was in person. Shaq Morris is a bigger dude than I thought he was in person. That team has something to it. Like Landry Shamit was dancing after threes. Like they had that little bit of swagger that I don't think UC necessarily has or knows how to contain. Plus, to me, the biggest thing is Wichita State has a top ten point guard in America. UC has questions, right? Like you guys were talking about it earlier. They don't even know who their best point guard is. Right, that's the thing. Like Kane Broom is their best point guard. Yeah, but, but they don't, it's not it's the minutes on. But he can't five. defend Landry Shamit. Justin Jennifer can bother him a little bit, but he's not a plus on the offensive side of the ball. So it's one of those. To me, that's that's the most important position in college basketball. There's the advantage. That's that's why Wichita State should and I think will win the game on Sunday, which ultimately gives them the number one seed. Um, you, you got Jacob Evans banged up. I, I don't care if he's playing. He's not going to be 100%. Like, you know, I, I, anybody who played basketball knows you don't recover from a sprained ankle as light as it is in, what, a day and a half? Or I, I guess two days. They're playing Sunday at noon. Well, and Shamit, when I was at the game, how impressive he is in person. I mean, I'd oh. seen him play on TV, but when you're right there and you're watching him – the size that he has, the speed that he has. He doesn't panic. And he doesn't, doesn't turn the ball no. over. There was no panic in him in that press that UC gave him. I mean, Shamit, and then the overall size of Wichita State, I was relatively impressed with. I mean, everyone in their starting lineup is above yeah. 6'3". I mean, you got Reeves, McDuffie, Shaq Morris is tough down low. I mean, and they're taught so well offensively, the way they take care of the basketball, the way that they cut. I, mean, I think Coach Marshall does a great job. I know they've had some missteps in the American, even when you look at the game last night when UCF almost beats them. They have so much more talent uh, than UCF. That's like Cincinnati, though, the day or the game before they played Wichita here, right? Like, they lost at Houston because they were looking ahead to a degree. I think the same thing with Wichita. Like, it's just easy to do when you're one of the two best teams. Houston's the third best team in that conference. Right. I mean, they're pretty good. But like, if you look ahead, like, they blew a they lead. Beat, they beat Wichita State earlier in the year. Right. They're not, but like, Cincinnati was up. Scrubs. Cincinnati was up, what, 11 in the first half? Yeah, we're fair. Right, like if you're if you're this lockdown defense, I don't like. Does Houston offense scare you that much? Especially if Nightmares. you're if you're if, right. <laughs> yeah, like Rob Grant's good. Though. Like they're they're good. Don't get me wrong. But if you're a top five defensive team in the country, Correct. you're up eleven. I don't care if you're up eleven in the first twenty seconds. You should coach the rest of the game. Like that game should get no closer than five. Yeah, if that's your if, that, if that's, that's your, your mo, yeah. right. And this is supposed to be, and I'm using this loosely, Mick Cronin's best offensive team. How do you lose that? I would, you shouldn't, I would you shouldn't ask lose the, it. I would ask the guys over here, but they right. don't have mics. So. Right. Well, and that's that's the whole that's the whole issue with UC in a nutshell is how they overwhelm the teams that they should overwhelm. Yep. But then when they play against big time guards and you have NBA talent like a guy like Landry Shamit does, he dictates a game, and they don't have a point guard that matches up with a guy like that because no. Jennifer and Broom, they just can't get it done on both ends of the court. If they're playing against a guy at an NBA caliber. Well, that and then what Cincinnati was doing in the game was they would send a double, not to trap, but to just get the ball out of Shamit's hands. Well, that's fine. But then you're dealing with Frank Camp walking into a three. You're dealing with Reeves, who's who panicked a little bit, but he's good enough to just get the ball, pass it forward. And then you're running a three on two, four on three. Because Cincinnati's so worried about getting the ball out of Shamit's hands. Don't let him get it in the backcourt. Don't let him bring it up. They were running that. like Again, it wasn't to necessarily trap or force a turnover. But that's how Wichita is extended that lead in the second half. All right, UC, you got Wichita State on yeah, Sunday. It's at home. Taking Wichita, night. so yeah. you Wichita in the American. Uh, as far as Xavier and DePaul, you expect them to win in the Big East tournament. Who do you think wins the Big East tournament? I'll still go with Villanova. All right, Nova in the Big East tournament. And now I want to go to the Arizona story and Sean Miller. I know you talked about this uh, last night, but. This seems like a complete mess right now. The reports came out uh, last Friday. Sean Miller talks over the phone, possibly giving $100,000 to DeAndre Ayton with Christian Dawkins, uh, who was an agent at that time that was working with Andy Miller. Uh, reports came out. Sean Miller does not coach that game. DeAndre Ayton plays the game on Saturday. And we fast forward ahead. Bobby, there's been some issues with the timeline. ESPN has had some conflicting statements. They've come out, changed their timeline multiple times. Ultimately, Sean Miller is back. He's coaching. He coached in the game last night. Arizona played well. Aiton played. Uh, Sean Miller got a standing ovation. Uh, you know, what, what do you make of this, um, and, and who do you believe? Do you believe ESPN? Do you believe Mark Schleba's report? 
or are you siding more towards Sean Miller at this time based on the conflicting reports that we've been given? Yeah, I'm, I'm siding on more of the Sean Miller side, the Arizona side. Like, if Here's the thing. When you are not part of, the, uh, of an FBI investigation, which Sean Miller in Arizona wasn't or weren't, you get notified when your phone's tapped. So Arizona knew that their phone's tapped. That's where the timeline doesn't add up. And it's kind of come out like, well, no, it's not really against, like SI, I think, had a report yesterday. Like, oh, no, it's not DeAndre Ayton. Okay, then who the heck is it? Is it Brian Bowen? And that's why I think Sean Miller is, like, keep saying, like, he's, he, his quote was, I'm going to be vindicated. That means one of two things. ESPN's report is just false or he's lying. Like, there's no in between. And I'm starting to think, all right, I kind of think Sean Miller's the one because you have 24-7 come out and say, Nope, timeline doesn't match up. You have SI.com and say, oh, it's not DeAndre Ayton, or at least that's what the source says. ESPN ran a single-sourced report. I think there was some validity. I think there was some sort of conversation. I don't know if it was necessarily Sean Miller or anything along those lines. I, I think it's like anything else in college basketball, quite honestly, but I'm thinking it's more Sean Miller being correct. I, I think what's challenging for me right now is it's hard for me to believe that Sean would go – into a press conference and say that w- without completely knowing he did he did not say anything that along a, those lines. That like was the a w- defiance. Yeah, I mean, the, the way that he talked, you could tell, absolutely, defiant yeah. is a great word, but he basically went on there and there's no way yeah. that I did this, but... What, what took him so long? I, here's that's the thing. A, that, that, that's my question. It, 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 I think Sean Miller's full of shit. I so why would he, that dude, and that's well, why why would so he sit out that game and wait it's on the road. Days? It's on the road. Because what? It's on the road. They were at Oregon. You don't. It, okay. It's easier to remove Sean Miller from that game and wait for him. They have two home games in the season. You pull him out to less than 24 hours. You just deal with it. You don't, you don't have to deal with Sean Miller and DeAndre Ayton with an Oregon crowd who is one of the better ones in the Pac-12. Just wait. Let him go back home. He made a statement. Like, he put out a statement. I'm just saying, when they sat him out as someone who, like, just, like, fall, it looked like – Dude is so guilty, it, it and, then just, I, and then I saw him playing, and I was just like, wh- "Why are they letting him play?" Because he's eligible. Well, I get that. You, you can't prove he took money. Me and you could have a discussion right now. Hey, guess what? I paid Kevin Knox hundred grand to go to Kentucky. To go to Kentucky. Well, just just hey, watch your mouth. You know, right? You never but know that's what, what people saying. are going to take. <laughs> what like, say. that, that's what I'm saying. Like, right? There's no, no proof. I know, I there's know. no I, proof that I, he took the money. I, get all I that. will say, ESPN does come out with headlines sometimes that don't seem to make sense, and, and they come out with it most of the time. In their history, when they've come out with with facts like this, these these details that ultimately puts Sean Miller in any situation into a bad situation, normally they're it's correct. They're correct. Like, normally, when they come and out they, with stuff we, like this, like it, they've but, done their this, due diligence. And, and that's why it's silent. And then Arizona went silent. But Sean, no, Sean Miller put out a statement within 24 hours. That's when he said, "I will be vindicated." Oh, uh, okay, fair. Yeah, like he put a statement out put, Saturday. He, yeah. He put it out. I, 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 I yeah. it, it was a written I, statement. It wasn't a, a you know it wasn't sitting down in front of camera. I just but it was I will, still a okay statement. if he's really if he really is vindicated and it's not true. I wish they would have done what he did yesterday. I believe it was yeah, uh, like right away. That'd have been. It's all optics, though. Like yeah, I, I mean, guess yeah, Sean fair. Miller probably had to talk to fifteen people before that's he true. was able to make that's, a statement. That's true. You consult like, with, you consult with the lawyers. Really, everybody yeah, agreed. You consult with the lawyers, you consult with PR. But it just looked and shady when yeah. he didn't coach that game. When he didn't coach that game, it's, it's just it's like, easier to just have him sit out than yeah. eat. And it makes sense for the university. It kind of saves them too to give them right. a little time to actually understand what's going on instead of just like And like I said, I guarantee if that game was at home he coaches. Okay. Fair. You're on the road, I mean Yeah. And you're on the road at Oregon. If you're on the road against like Washington State, he probably yeah, he coaches. probably, probably right. plays. <laughs> Oregon, Oregon crowd's a little, little out there, re- ready to like yeah. get, get going. So. I mean, either way, they're gonna find out because the they're gonna come out. Like it either happened or it didn't happen. I don't, I don't just, think we ever find out. It just amazes me that Schleyball would come out with with that story without actually hearing the tapes. Like who? Well, who can't. did he get the information from? Who who is this coming from that gave him the story? Because that's that, the opening to have, question. Because to have the confidence. To go out and put that, obviously, in the public, and you put Sean Miller and Arizona in a really difficult position. Like For me, I'm like, this guy had to have had everything possible to put that out. I mean, that's the problem. He single-sourced it. Like That's the number one rule in journalism school. You don't single-source a report like that. 
you got to get more. You got to get multiple sources. I, I, I learned that in, in high school. Right. I had to get three sources, and it was crap. Yeah. AP yeah. AP style I had to cite them correctly. So the question is, who's the source? It's there, there's a couple of different rumors of who it is. It's Christian Dawkins' lawyer. It's Book Richardson or his lawyer. It's the feds leaking it, which I've had a couple of people be like, that just is not happening. Um, I feel like they should have bigger things on their plate. Agreed, but it's still a case. It's, yes. it's not like the entire FBI is focused on this. Like, I, I, I know, I've heard still, that argument like, too, but I feel like fans. it's just like there's... Right, I it's mean, not I like they're using stupid, 90% yeah. of their force right. to... No, no, to no, go no. over the college basketball no, NBA, I'm FBI talking investigation. about that one, like if they're leaking things to like get reaction, like that for that one or two people. Well, that are on it's this because case, like it seems absurd. It's because they lost the case against Brad Augustine, the AAU director. They've had an undercover agent like go rogue in this investigation. They had uh, like a legal wiretapping. It's been a disaster from the FBI side too. Like their yeah. cases are falling apart. College basketball is amazing at hiding things. Good for them. They just I know, FBI FBI can't even get in. Don't mess with the NCAA. They'll <laughs> they'll suicide you. You'll never be found. Never never be found ever never again. Well, I'm interested to see what happens. I played for Sean, so I I mean I'm hoping I'm hoping that he he did not do this. I obviously ha- have no recollection of him you know passing out any sort and of cash at all. I hope he did because DeAndre Ayton's worth more than hundred grand. Yeah, way more. <laughs> way, way, way more. Pay him five hundred. Yeah. Like, no, don't short side the kid because right. he's young. Well, and Bob, we also had some big time finishes last night. And yeah. whenever you get to March, the finishes seem to get better and better. The talent gets better. The guys just seem to play better during this time. But we had UCF, Wichita State, Virginia, Louisville, Miami at North Carolina, buzzer beaters in all these games. Let's go to the Virginia Louisville game first because I, I was laughing at what you wrote on, on Barstool last we'll, night. We'll never see that again. I mean, it was unbelievable. That was the craziest ending. Like, Take away, it was crazier than Chris Jenkins, Marcus Page. It was crazier than like the '83 NCAA championship. <laughs> I've never seen shit like that. Like, you're up four with point nine seconds to go. All you have to do is literally throw the ball for medium. It's literally <laughs> there's a zero there's percent chance of losing that game. Up four with point nine. There's a zero. Even, there's a zero percent chance. You got zero. Gift, you got to gift the lane by. Like it, it was a three step process to lose the game. You foul the guy in the three. All right, you're still up four. As long as you don't give up an offensive rebound, you win the game. Yeah. Lane violation. All right, all we got to do is inbound the ball. Literally, I could toss it to you, and the game's over. You could just toss it in the middle of the court, and the game's most likely over. That was absurd. Dangadell is not a freshman, and he just like he just panicked. And they, the worst part was Paget told him, "We have one timeout." Didn't, obviously, didn't call it. That's a, that's a problem. And, <laughs> and then the shot that Hunter hits from un- un- from the wing. I mean, he. Yeah. He caught that ball so quickly, got it out of his hands. I mean, it was which is impressive enough. It was epic. It was and awesome. Then, and then the deep bank. And it doesn't bother me that it happened at Louisville. It doesn't bother me at all. On senior night, where they won fifteen to the last sixteen. And then North Carolina loses senior night too. That was a great finish too. I, Unbelievable finish. I don't mind that. Joe Barry hits the shot. I love watching UNC lose heartbreakers like that. You hate UNC. <laughs> <laughs> They're my least. What's your beef with UNC? I grew, up a, I grew up a Wake Forest fan. Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah, Chris Paul. Even before that, Randolph Childress. Oh wow, you go way back. Yeah, Tim Duncan. Why were you a Why were you a Wake Forest? That's where fan? my pops went. Oh, okay, that makes yeah. sense. Winston huh. Salem. So, so you grew up wearing like the old baggy T shirt, and then it was just like on from there. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I understand. Um, no, I mean that game was crazy. Like Joel Joel Berry played out of his mind, especially the second half. I think at twenty five in the second half, it was he, he had like three the first half. Hits that hits that shot. I mean. Miami never should have been in that situation. They were up, what, 14? Yeah. And, like, it just kept being like UNC cut it to 10, cut it to 8, cut it to 6, cut it to 1. All right, now we're tied. And then Jaquan Newton, who is, like, a 20% three-point shooter, drills a 40-footer. It's the best. Like that's what makes college basketball really awesome. It was a forty. It was like a floater. It was. It wasn't like he, no, was, he was set hung, up for a jump shot. He hung in the air for a second. He just like hung and then he jumped off one. Do you foot, know what my absolute forward, least favorite thing about that game was though? What? Every single person in my mentions going. Oh, he traveled. <laughs> no, he didn't. <laughs> He's gonna travel back home with a win. It's gonna be right. Fine. <laughs> like, the people are just like, oh, like how do you like how do you try to talk about that? Be like, oh no, he traveled. Like no man, you just lost. Bobby, outside of that, what else? What else you look? There's all these tournament games going on. Yeah. The Big Ten tournament. I know how much you love that happening in New York Catch right now. Catch the excitement, baby! Yeah, you got the Big East tournament. Is, is there any one in particular that you're looking forward to watching uh, more than the others? 
In terms of, like the power conferences? Yeah, just in terms of what teams you enjoy watching more. Wait, what what, what power conference? conference team that you're like super jazzed? Like you want to watch yeah, the man. Conference USA, Middle Tennessee, Western Kentucky, Old mm. Dominion. I'm all jacked Middle up for Tennessee. that one. I'm kind of locked into the horizon just because I'm so connected to Northern Kentucky. Right. So I'll, I'll be watching the horizon all weekend. Well, because like, Middle Tennessee should be a, a uh, an at-large team whether they win the win the league or not. Like, they're that good. You're the first yeah. person all year that I've ever I'm excited to see what uh, does UC does in their conference. In the, oh, man. The middle the Greg, that, that, that was a cheap shot. Another cheap shot Well, it, let's, that was, let's, that, let's The cheap fair, shots keep coming. Let's be fair. Eh, like, three, or like a quarter of that conference is a low major. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> we agree. I a mean, East bit. Carolina to Lincoln. Quarter of the way. Yeah. What's it? What's it take to get UC back in the Big East? No, they drop, can't drop, drop football. a football team. <laughs> drop football and have Xavier go somewhere else because they'll get blocked. Like, they don't have the TV market. It's why Dayton's not going to be in the Big East. Did you say? Oh, it's why Dayton. Yeah. Right, right, right. I thought you said something drastically different. <laughs> it made more sense. He said why. But no, I think for the power conferences, I think the SEC is going to be most entertaining because it's wide open. Well, they're it's saying so that uh, um, uh, Porter could be back Saturday right. to play. Right. Don't say that. That's terrifying. And if that happens, yeah. and the, terrifying. And the, and the SEC tournament's in St. Louis. So yeah. Terrifying. All right. Like, Bobby, yeah. can you talk to Nick <laughs> about Kentucky? Can you? Can you? He, he. I mean, I know you guys both love Kentucky, and, and I know I know that you guys we can solve love, feelings. You love Big Blue Nation, but I, I just I want you to keep expectations. Maybe where they should be, or maybe, maybe where they shouldn't be. Maybe, maybe I don't know, but it, well, why don't you Sweet and Nick 16. have a conversation? Sweet sixteen. I'm pretty bipolar with them right now. Sweet sixteen's expectations. Agreed. I think that's, that's like what that, I'm saying. Yeah. If you make the Sweet sixteen, it's a, a successful year. If you win a tournament game, if you you're like, don't hang yourself. Yeah, well, I yeah agree. Right. That's If you win a tournament game, you're like, all right, well, that's a little depressing. We probably should get to the second weekend, but we also lost four in a row. The biggest thing that Kentucky's done is switch what they do offensively, getting knocks in flex cuts, baseline cuts, and High low sets where there's a big on big screen. He curls. Gabriel throws the pass in. Getting Knox moving, like he's starting to become the equivalent to what Julius Randle was. Yeah. How many people do you think stay? That's my rope. Uh, we don't, we only have you some from so few time left. How, how many people <laughs> stay? All right. So That's what I really want to know. Who, here's who I think leaves. Diallo leaves. Duh. Uh, Knox uh, goes. Knox. Gilgis Alexander. Yeah. I kind of think Richards leaves. Really? <laughs> Dumb, stupid asshole. Because he's going to get hey, he's gonna easy get there. Easy. Because people will see stay. potential. People will see potential. I know he's big, but just stay and like be decent. Yeah, I think those, I think those guys leave. I think those three should leave. They deserve to leave. Green, Green's back. Washington's, Which is good. Washington's back. Um, Vanderbilt's back. No, no, I'm sorry. Vanderbilt's gone. You think he's gone? Yeah. That's too bad. I really want him to stay. Yeah, I th- yeah he's okay. Super we fun. can go back to like Xavier and Biggie shit or whatever. So. No, I, I feel like we've covered about everything. I mean, is there anything college basketball wise you guys want to get off your chest? Greg, you look like you're thinking over there. You're pondering. He's just for a little bit. You're just dig. yeah. No, nope, just uh, everything's good in my world of college Nick, basketball. What do you got here? You got I think it, that for, we should. I think that I think that we should. Uh, are we missing anything? No, I think that we should figure out how to do it at Dana's more often. I do like having it over here at Dane. I think this is a pretty good setup. I agree. Yeah, I like this a lot. I agree. It's good. And, and we're doing it on Friday afternoon. Do you Bob, think we normally shoot at 5 in the morning. That's a, that's a, we that's shoot a, at, that's a you problem. We shoot at 5 in the morning. <laughs> no, that's a bread works for a Fortune 500 company. Right. they got to do this yeah. stuff early. It's tough. It's tough out there for me. Well, you're, you're, you're a grown man. You're, growing, you're a growing boy. I, I you try to cater to your schedule. I guess, it, I guess that I am. I just want to know when we can get on some UC bars. That's oh yeah, we'd love to come to a UC bar. Yeah, can we record at Woody's? Oh. They were just they were just talking about up. trying to do it. Yeah, let's do it. Let's you let us up. know. We'll set up over we'll at Woody's. They're gonna hate. They're, well, no, we'll be fine over there. I don't think they can hate us at Woody's. No, Woody's is way Woody's worse stuff than they would ever do yeah. here. I will Woody's. switch yeah. my conversation of that the Americans a fourth low major to there's like two <laughs> like <laughs> possible final four teams. <laughs> well, honestly, there kind of is. They could both technically get there. Yeah, like I think Wichita and Cincinnati are both Final Four caliber. Yeah, I would agree with that. I don't think they're national title contenders. Wichita maybe a little bit more than Cincinnati. Just because of point guard play? Yeah, right, exactly. But I think they're both Final Four caliber teams. They're both good. You don't don't think they're Final Four caliber teams? They're better than in the, South. Right, in the in the in the perfect bracket. That's all maybe. that matters. South, in, in the that's all that matters bracket. to everybody, though. They're better than, than South perfect. Carolina. 
Greg, I have been watching you Everybody needs check a favor these. on a back bracket. Just about every team needs a favor on the bracket. You should hear. Okay. That is completely true. We work together mm. outside of this podcast as well. So I see him check the brackets, the Lenardi updates, bullshit, all the time, right? Mm. We'll give me that bracket. We'll give me that bracket. The, the basketball like reference. reference. Yeah. You got to go basketball reference. Fair. And uh, I it, believe you need to go Barcelona sports on every Sunday. Yeah, sorry. It, but he goes. <laughs> Fair he enough. Like, he, like looks, <laughs> he like looks at him and sometimes is like, oh, God, that'd be terrible. Like for where Xavier's <laughs> plays. And then other times it's like, boom, Final Four. Dude, you stay know, out of the West. Stay out of the West. Xavier that should have petitioned <laughs> to end the season when the top 16 came out. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Right? Like Clemson was a two. Or yeah. Like, well, Auburn was a two. Clemson was a three. Oklahoma was the four. Xavier should have been like, we're done. Yeah. We're, let's end it right we'll here. We'll take we're it. We'll take it. I think uh, we all would have taken that. A- any Xavier fan out there would have taken that bracket. We saw it and we were like, <laughs> Can this happen, please? Right. right now, this needs to happen. Because yeah. the East is going to be brutal. The East is going to be Villanova and Duke, whether it's a, whoever's one, whoever's two. They're, yeah. they're both it's going to Boston. Rough. Fellas, that was fun. I, I really had a good time. I, we could do this for hours. We could just stay here for hours. I, I need more beer. Well, we can do it, but no one will continue to watch, so we should get off Yeah, here. that could be it. What, but I, I, tell, I tell everybody, Bobby is a complete wealth of knowledge of college basketball. You were, I mean, unbelievable. I'm believe we we appreciate you coming over to the Be Different podcast. You were fantastic as always. I always enjoy talking with you about college hoops. You're you're, you're a connoisseur. You're a magician. Yeah, Greg, well. Nick, do you have words words for? Go blue. That's all. I got. That's yeah. all you got. All I Thank got. you. Thank you for your yeah. for your information. And then for everyone that wants to follow you directly that already doesn't, can you share that information? Yeah, go to Twitter on Barstool Reeks. Um, uh, you can go to BarstoolSports.com. And then uh, you can follow my podcast, Fundamentally Sound Podcast, on uh, Apple, Audio Boom, Google Play, all that good stuff. Awesome. Well, as we keep moving through the conference tournaments, we move to the NCAA tournament. This is the best time for college basketball, Bobby. We're, we're going to have to keep in touch with you. Thank you again for coming on. And as for Greg Richard, Nick Given, Bobby Regan, Brad Redford, we are out of here. Thanks, Bobby. <laughs>